Yo, what's poppin'? Welcome to Broman Brapsody. This is where we review cars and motorcycles. I'm the host for your motorcycles and the punk does the cars. Today we're at Tobacco Road, Harley Davidson in Raleigh, North Carolina with Tyler. Tyler, how you doing? Good. How are you doing, bro, man? I'm living the dream. I'm living the dream. Good to see you. Finally, we got you in here. Yes, we, I'm here and I am standing next to this amazing, beautiful bike. What is this bike? So this is a 2021 Lowrider S. Uh, it has a one of one paint job. Everything else is completely stock, but as far as a bike goes, I mean, can you really call it stock when it's this set up? You just said it's a one of one paint and stock in the same sentence. <laughs> right. <laughs> this is a 2021 Harley Davidson Lowrider S. In today's episode, we learn more about this bike, see some of its cool features, take it out on the road, share my thoughts with you guys, talk about a cost of ownership, and assign it a Broman score. But before we do any of that, if you're new to Broman, give us a like and click that subscribe button. We put out content every week and your support would mean a lot. It's me, it's your boy Bro, and I am your Broman. The Lowrider's been around, it's a classic Harley-Davidson, it's been around since 1977. Um, they were the Dynas uh, at the time, so external suspension, they basically faced upward, straight up your back. The new ones in 2018 came out with the new soft tails, uh, which came out with the mono GP uh, style uh, suspension, which is the mono shock that lays underneath the seat like this. Um, it basically makes the bit where the bike takes the brunt of the hit, instead of um, basically going right up right. your back. The mono shock suspension is something you see a lot of sports bike and track bikes and MotoGP bikes, right? Yeah. You're bringing racing technology to a cruiser. Yep, yep. So oh. uh, they did that to all the soft tails in 2018. They're just so much better now. Uh, oh. With the new motors, new transmission, and also not having the oil pan underneath you. The older soft tails had the oil pan that sat underneath you. Ah. Um, they got rid of that because a lot of people were complaining about how hot they would get. Yeah. Um, so these do not get as hot. The new motor is the 114 cubic inch that puts out what, 100 horses, 119 foot, pound feet of torque? Oh yeah, and that's stock. And that's stock. <laughs> um, and, and when you say that's just stock, I'm kind of scared to ask, but I'm assuming you can go higher up if you wanted to? Yeah, Different so, stage, stage kits and stuff maybe? Yeah, so Harley makes a 131 stage four kit um, that you can actually get if you do within the first 60 days, it'll actually be covered under your factory warranty. Um, you can make upwards of about 140-ish, depending on the mods that you put into it. Uh, with a stock one, uh, if you change the tuner and the cam, you can get all the way up to in the 160s um, torque and horsepower, and we have a dyno here to do it for you. That's insane numbers for a bike that weighs less than 700 pounds, 679, 680 pounds wet weight. Yeah. That's an insane amount of power, man. But hey, how much power is enough? I think a little more, right? right? It's always more. <laughs> a, little, a little more, maybe. Um, yeah, so this one comes with the 114 Walkie 8. So it's the biggest mo production motor on the, unless you go to the CVO, which mm -hmm. has the 117. The head, so it's got four valves per head on oh. the new motor versus the twin cam, which was the old motor that it replaced. The twin cam had two valves per head. Um, this one also has two spark plugs per head versus the one spark plug per head on the twin cam. So the fuel flows better and it also burns more efficient, making a lot more low end torque um, all throughout the power range. And tell us about this one of one paint. You told me there's some intricate details about this paint. So um, it is a one of one, uh, just like you said. Um, it has also been hand pinstriped um, and you will not see another one on the road like this one, which is a good thing for Harleys because there's a lot of Harleys out there. When you come to an event at Tobacco Road, um, <laughs> it seems like everyone has the same bikes. They're called Me Too bikes. Me what do you have? I have a black Road Glide, oh, Me Too. These are. <laughs> This is not going to be one of them. Um, this is a more performance club style uh, paint job that we got done on this bike. Yeah, yeah so. and that's the thing about motorcycles, right? It doesn't matter what brand, what make, what kind of bike you have. It has to speak to you, so you should be able to personalize it, customize it however you want to. You get a, you get a headlight cowl on top, a single solo seat. And these are stock features, I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can change anything you want on a Harley. Um, I know a lot of bikes are really custom customizable, mm -hmm. um, but Harleys take it a step further. I mean, you can change every bolt. Um, they even make bolts that have the Harley logo in them uh, <laughs> to tell you how crazy you can get. Yeah, and you also get an LED light with this uh, the Lowrider S, the bronze wheels, as well as inverted front forks. The normal Lowrider does not have that and also has a 107 motor. Um, so this one being around 1,860-ish CCs, um, and it's a beast. It's, oh, I can only imagine. Another sign that it's a beast, it's got dual front discs. Yeah, 
yeah. dual front discs. They, uh, in, didn't you say that there are only two Harleys, that two or three Harleys that come with dual front discs? Yeah, this that's is one coming to mind. Uh, the Softail Fat Bob and the Lowrider S, and to my knowledge, is the only ones. Um, the new soft tails that come with the dual disc front brakes. Uh, and these also are Brembo brakes, by the way. Oh. They don't have, they have the Harley logo on them, but they are Brembo they're brakes. Brembo brakes. Yeah. If you weren't really sure that Harley was serious about performance with this bike, the one dead giveaway that any bike is a performance bike is when it has Brembo brakes. <laughs> That's serious business. Yeah. A lot of power, good. Of course, with all the power it's putting down, you need Brembo brakes. Yeah. You need to see your stopping power. And not just that, this also comes standard with ABS. Yep. This weighs less than 700 pounds, 679 pounds to be precise. A good amount of power, looks gorgeous. What else can you want from a bike? Right. <laughs> uh, I personally like ABS. I don't like being having the brakes lock up on me, but oh. I know uh, some Harley lighters like to slide the rear end. You can disable it. Uh, you can get it disabled here uh, <laughs> if you really want to slide the rear end. But me personally, I like to be able to stop. <laughs> yeah, me too. I'm with you on that. Yeah. What do you say we do a quick walk around and show some of the cool features to our viewers? It has these LED headlamps with the halo. And this is uh, a Harley trademark of sorts where you have those turn signals right underneath the handlebars. Yeah, right? yep. which you can relocate them. Uh, there's so many mods. I've seen people put them here uh, where they're little rings. Yeah. Um, Many things if you don't like the looks up there, but most people just keep them. These are the gold pinstripes that he was talking about. This is this is all hand done, and it goes all around along the bike. It's there, it's on the fender, it's on the fuel tank, it's there, and it's also on the rear fender. Beautiful, just beautiful. And uh, these are the uh, bronze wheels for the Lowrider S. Oh, and the Lowrider S is the only one that comes with the bronze wheels. Bronze wheels, dual discs, and these have the Brembo brakes. It does say Harley on top, but they are they're Brembo, they're Brembo yep. brakes. And they also have the floating rotors, so when they get hot, they won't warp. Inverted front forks, like I've said in my previous videos. The front suspension, uh, suspension of a bike consists of two components, the larger tube and the smaller tube. The larger tube usually stays stationary, the smaller tube goes in and out. In most bikes, especially cruisers, you'll see the larger tube is at the bottom, the smaller tube's on, on top. Here it's the other way around. Why? This aids in handling because this gives more rigidity to the steering mount. Combine that with the rake angle. This has a 29 degree rake angle. What's the rake angle, you ask? Well, draw a perpendicular from the steering mount, follow the fork tube. That angle is your rake angle. The shorter the rake angle, the more nimble the bike is, and larger the rake angle, the more stable the bike is at higher speeds, highway speeds, and such. So what's cool about this uh, 114, the newer motor, is you do not need to change out this uh, breather here to do a stage one or even a stage four. This is actually most uh, older Harleys, you had to change out the breather to get more airflow. Um, this one is uh, perfectly fine. All you need is a tuner and exhaust and whatever kit you're gonna do. And, um, and it's ready to go. The pegs, so on the Lowrider S, this is uh, in between, so it's not a mid control and it's not a forward control, oh, it's an in between. So you get the best of both worlds, a little bit more relaxing seat position, but also aggressive in the turn. The two into two dual exhausts. And again, that beautiful paint and the details here. On the back, we have LED tail lights and those two turn signals with the license plate holder on top. Pretty cool. As you can see, Bell Drive, we have a six-speed transmission. This does not need a key, this has a key fob. Yep, it has the security feature. Um, so basically, as long as you have it on you and you go up and uh, hit the fuel pump, which is also the ignition on this bike, um, and it's ready to go. And you just hold down the, the starter and it'll fire right up. Any Harley with these two gauges, it's a lowrider. Yeah, so if you see them, um, vertical like this um, where you see the two gauges um, automatically it's a lowrider s no. uh, not an s i mean a lowrider low yeah they've been around this typical lowrider and for the two gauges the one at the bottom is your tachometer and on the top is your of course you have your analog speedometer and you have a bunch of warning lights here you have your turn signals abs neutral engine oil check engine and here you have this like little uh, digital display this gives you your odometer. If you press that toggle button, you can you get your trip A, trip B, your uh, fuel range, your time, and you're back to your odometer. And when you start moving, it'll also tell you which gear you're on. And then it tells you how many, how much gas you have on the top. As for your handlebar controls, on your left, you have. This is something that Harley does. 
uh, they put the left turn signal on the left side. You have your horn. This is to toggle through the menu, passing, li uh, passing lights and high, high beams. On your right, you have your hazards, starter button, that's your kill switch and the right, right turn signal. So Tyler, can you tell our viewers a little bit about Tobacco Road Harley-Davidson? It used to be right down the street um, in a smaller building. Um, it was Ray Price Harley-Davidson. Now have been uh, changed over since Ray passed away uh, about four years ago. Now we have new owners. Uh, his wife uh, still comes by to this day every week um, just to see how the place is doing. Uh, we have new owners now and now we have Tobacco Road as the name. name. And Ray Price was a very well-known drag racer around in these neck of the woods, right? Oh yeah, so he's, they have championships under their belt. We still have his drag bikes and a museum dedicated to him on the second floor, so please come by and see it. Um, this place has uh, got eight drag bikes at the moment, a 2014 uh, championship drag bike up there as well. Um, we are also dog and kid friendly, so please bring people around. And tell us a little story about those drag marks that we see here. Yeah, so um, when this place was built, they put down a concrete slab that runs the length of the uh, main building. Um, basically, they did massive drag burnouts, um, put down the lines, um, and then they clear coated it so it's still here today. Yeah, so uh, at the moment, we have one of the largest inventories during what's going on. We have 120 bikes, new and used bikes. Um, we also have a dyno here, um, which not many Harley dealerships actually have dynos. Uh, we are fortunate enough to have one, so we can tune your bike, make more power for your bike if you would like to. Um, just bring it by. We have master techs um, here that are able to do whatever you want. They're located right here in downtown Raleigh, North Carolina. They have a huge selection of motorcycles, gear, helmets, jackets, t-shirts, pants, boots, name it, they have it. Accessories for your bike, accessories for your home, whatever you want. Of course, everything's Harley themed. You want it, they have it. I'll put their website link in the video description below. Come check them out. Uh, when they come here, who, who should they say send them to you? Uh, uh, bro man. Yes. <laughs> yes, tell them the bro man sent you. Thank you, Tyler. This was awesome. I had an amazing time with this bike. Uh, and speaking of time, do you happen to know what time it is? Oh. It's right o'clock. It's right o'clock. Let's go. If you're new to bro man, give us a like and click that subscribe button. We put out content every week and your support would mean a lot. <laughs> so let's do our first test, which is, let's make a couple of U-turns and see how this thing maneuvers, shall we? Huh. Not bad at all, not bad at all. It's time to do our second test, which is our pull test. Let's see how good this puppy pulls, shall we? <laughs> oh yeah, boy. It's a Harley with a big 114 cubic inch engine. What did you expect? <laughs> This has a good kick, man. This has a good kick. That 800 to 700 pound frame. Yeah, it can hustle. Let's see how it takes this corner, shall we? Going around the corner. Yeah, not bad. Not bad. So first impressions of this bike. I don't have a big fairing or windshield, none of that. Uh, these have the drag inspired handlebars, so they are a little forward. Uh, you don't have to really stretch forward to get to them. The seat is very comfortable, my legs aren't bent weirdly. This is a cool little bike, you're sitting up straight. You have these like cool handlebars. You have these like mirrors on either side. Uh, pretty decent mirrors, pretty decent mirrors. I mean, anytime you're riding a Harley, you just feel so cool. And this is no different. And you have, like it says Harley everywhere, you have a little thing here, it says it's Harley. Uh, the gauges say it's here Harleys. So, just in case you were confused what kind of bike you're riding, you'll always know it's a Harley. <laughs> Again, this bike has those two fuel caps, they're there for symmetry, this one is just for show. This is your fuel cap. 
and see you riding along man the suspension is really nice with the with the single monoshock soft tail look it really eats up these bumps and bruises on the road no problem at all no problem at all and as with all Harleys man uh, if you're riding Harley um, you get that feeling of that big engine that's sitting right between your legs you get that thumping sound the vibrations all of that uh, all of that good stuff but I'll tell you what like you feel some vibrations but it's not like the vibrations have felt on previous Harleys so this is a newer generation Harley so it's a little better <laughs> it's different some people might like it more than the more than others but hey I like it it's pretty cool now this is the bike I'm riding right now is not the one of one of course that's a special bike don't want to put miles on it don't want to put bugs on it none of that stuff <laughs> that's just too pretty and too nice of a bike for me to ride so I got another one the same same thing it's a Harley Lowrider S everything's the same except for the fact that this is not that one of one pain doesn't change the fact that it's still a pretty cool bike now is this a bike that you can use for commuting yes you can this is a comfortable bike I like the seating position I like the power uh, it doesn't have saddlebags or anything like that but you could always have a backpack or get aftermarket saddlebags I guess but the saddlebags would kind of mess up the look of this bike the aesthetics but yeah you could use this as a commuter no problemo I'm just riding along this beautiful countryside check out check out the clouds oh man this is beautiful beautiful day to ride now is this a good bike for touring well sure for some distance a short distance touring maybe short to medium distance now if you're going to go on a longer tour uh, like go on long distance touring yeah this is not the one for you because check this out like it has like sort of like mid-mounted controls uh, for long touring you need foot pegs that go all the way forward so you can stretch your leg and all of that good stuff again this, is, this also does not have a lot of wind protection no storage space so not the best for touring I'm 5'10", 31 inch inseam, this bike has a seat height of about 27 inches I can flat foot very easily, ha <laughs> ha Pretty well balanced bike, I'm not fighting to keep it one way or the other, it's staying quite upright Pretty cool And check out the little chugga 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 sound, yeah <laughs> Alright, which brings us to, our little, to the question, is this a good bike for beginners, bro man? no this is not this is not a bike for beginners why why bro man why because uh this is putting out 100 horses 119 foot pound of torque and this weighs 680 pounds uh without any mods combine those three factors that's too much power for a beginner and it's too much weight for a beginner so nope not a good beginner bike let's talk about the cost of ownership shall we so you would need a brake service after hitting 1000 miles and the bike needs to be serviced every 5000 miles or a year whichever comes first these services at your local harley dealer should run you about 400 bucks the tires on this motorcycle should get you about 10,000 miles a lot of it is going to depend upon how you ride it the more you rip it <laughs> the sooner it's gonna go so there's that keep that in mind the tires on this motorcycle should cost you about 650 bucks so over a two-year period assuming you ride 5,000 miles a year you would need the break-in service and the two other services so three services and a set of new tires that's a total of 1850 divided by the number of days it's about two dollars and fifty cents a day let's assign it a score shall we on the looks it's a nine out of ten on the brop it's an eight out of ten on the maintenance it's a seven and a half out of ten and on the comfort it's a seven and a half out of ten for a combined bromance score of eight out of ten so in conclusion man it's a cool bike it's a cool bike no doubt about it um, you can get so many mods for this bike the aftermarket is crazy with Harley mods even Harley offers so many power modifications and upgrades to the stock bike it's crazy in its stock form it's putting out 100 horses 119 foot-pound of torque lots of power lots of power uh, the seating 
the seating position is comfortable the ride is pretty cool the monoshock suspension is doing a great job uh, you could do a little bit of touring on this bike not super long distance touring not a great bike for beginners but this is a really cool bike though is this the bike for you is this the harley for you well head on down to your closest harley dealer and check it out for yourself thanks for watching i'll see you soon bro out <laughs>